What is up, guys? Welcome for week eight of the UPA. We are currently, the Montreal Habsols, we are currently two and five in this league, thanks to the worst luck that I have ever had doing anything in my life, this league right here. Uh, two and five, it's a, it's a pretty bad record, unfortunately, but uh, I'm not going to give up just yet. Uh, I know that there's still a very slight chance that we might still be able to make playoffs and that would be the biggest comeback that I have ever made for myself in anything. So that would be pretty huge. This week we are taking on Tim and the Digital Downfall. You see our team at the top over there. Uh, I actually uh, did this while I was not at home so I didn't have my nicknames or anything. Uh, this is why this is post commentated and I might start doing this for all my matches because honestly my record with post commentating matches or just playing a league matches while not doing um, live commentary is incredible. Like I'm 7-1. and one. It's really really good. So. Uh, I might just continue this way from now on, guys. I have to test the waters. I have to see how I'm going to go about it. I think I need to gain some experience in League Play before I start uh, live comming everything. So, uh, And I think that's that's a, a tip that anybody should take with them. Um, gain experience doing something before you start messing around with like different um, modules of, of how you're doing it. So that's, uh, that's just my opinion. And I think I'm going to do this from now on because I find myself playing better in general but anyway we had this match uh today today's sunday um you guys will be watching this on monday i might put this out on sunday i don't know depends but anyway this is uh this is the team that we brought clara the ladios again nothing is nicknamed but weasley the weavile johnson our seismitoad geo the ente um what did i name mika there we go mika the uh, stoutland it might have been a male i don't know i couldn't adjust anything from where i was and of course uh winner are blade uh against a pseudo rain team that our opponent brought made up of uh, Mega Swampert, Klefki, Claydol, which can set up the rain. So can Klefki, actually. Uh, so can Tornadus, which is over here down in the in the corner. Um, or in the middle of the screen. I don't know for you guys where it is, but Ludicolo, Tornadus, and Zoroark. Now, Zoroark was very, very scary. Uh, I didn't want to really deal with it. It did a lot of damage to my team, especially to Latias and the Blade. So I had to be very careful with it. So... Went into this match, we both went into this match, just uh, at this point we had terrible records this season and we were just like, you know what, forget it, let's just play. And that's kind of how I team built as well, if you guys watched the team builder, which was really short and sweet. Um, I just took some standard sets, popped a couple of moves that I thought could be useful for this game on there, and then just went with that. And Tim was nice enough to, because um, he's Dutch, he, he lives in the Netherlands. Uh, he was um, kind enough to schedule um, in consequence with me as well, so uh, it was very nice of him. So we got this battle off earlier today, again Sunday, and I'll just hop right into it, guys. I'll play this at normal speed because fast is a little quick for commentary. I'm going to switch sides as well, so lead matchup, I'm thinking Entei has the best possible matchup against the majority of his team. So I lead off with Entei, he leads off with Claydol, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just go for Sacred Fire, try to get a burn. We get the burn. He doesn't go for Earth Power or Earthquake. He just sets up his rocks. I'm like, okay, I can defog these away later. Let me go for another Sacred Fire. Just knock out this Claydol. At this point, his Tornadus comes in. I don't have a switch to this thing if it goes for Hurricane. I don't. So I stay in. He goes for Sludge Bomb. I don't know what he was predicting, but he goes for Sludge Bomb, takes Life Orb damage. Sacred Fire gets another kill. Geo, two kills, zero deaths this, this week, up until now. He goes into Swampert. I switch into Johnson, our, sw our Seismitoad, to take an Earthquake. <laughs> I don't know why I brought this thing in. I have a dedicated counter to this Swampert. Well, not counter, but it's a good check in our Stoutland. I'm running a max HP Intimidate set this week to be able to take on a physical variant of Mega Swampert. He goes for Earthquake. I take 38%. It's not much at all. I can hurt this thing with a return. I decide to just go for the return because if his Clef Key comes in, then it comes in. There's nothing I can do. He goes into Ludicolo. I'm like, why are you sacking this? And he reveals to be Sashed and the Zoroark. So, uh, Bisley over here uh, going down to his Sash. I know that I'm going down uh, to this thing. So I switch into Seismitoad thinking I'm going to sack it. And he goes for a flamethrower, and I'm like, okay, well, he's just going to Dark Pulse me on the next turn and take me out. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm going to click Stealth Rocks. But he decides to Sludge Bomb, which is also not very effective, and I'm able to get on my rocks, which is great because it, it breaks another potential Sash on the Ludicolo, as well as weakening the Clef Key and the Swampert, which is really nice. Here, I'm going to go into my Deblade. 
to blade i know he can sucker punch me here guys i'm just gonna pause real quick you guys see i go for shadow sneak i know he can sucker punch me i also know that i don't want weavile weakened for the late game in case he has a scarf ludicolo in the back and he can blow me back and i also do not want to go into anything else and take a dark pulse i don't want Ente getting any more weakened than it already is i basically just don't want anything coming in on rocks at this point uh, i want to defog them away before anything Rocks have done what they had to do for me. Uh, they were able to, at this point, with the blade in, uh, once he switches into a Pokemon, it takes a little bit of extra damage, which is all I needed to do, to do. I wasn't even planning on getting up rocks because I thought Seismitoda was dead. So, basically, uh, at this point, I just sh Shadow Stink. I'm like, you know what? Let's go into the blade. Uh, at this point, I need to keep my Weavile and my Entei alive. So I go for Shadow Sneak, and he reveals not to have Sucker Punch. Also, I was pretty certain that he didn't have it because he had Sludge Bomb, flamethrower and dark pulse i was pretty sure he was a fully special set maybe with u-turn i don't know but i didn't see uh shadow uh sucker punch uh being on the move set so i decided to go for a shadow sneak it's able to knock out this uh this aura arc we're in, we're sitting at 95 percent and he brings in clef key and i'm like okay well this is a pokemon that i can set up swords dances on goes for the thunder wave we don't get full parrot on this turn luckily get up to plus two he goes for the rain dance on this turn as i go for the iron head and I'm able to break uh, to bring him down to about 30%. Now, on, on this turn, I know that I can freely Swords Dance once again, either predicting her switch or for his Clef Key to stay in. He goes in a Ludicolo on this turn, and I get off the Swords Dance, as you guys will see. We go, we go for the Swords Dance. We are now at plus four. Shadow Sneak from plus four to Blade, Max Attack Adamant, has a something like an 84% chance to knock out Ludicolo. It does. 85 to 100 he's sitting at 88 thanks to our stealth rocks so he knows that he can potentially get knocked out here and just straight up lose to this thing so what does he do he pulls a switch out into a swampert to take the shadow sneak which takes it relatively well considering it's a plus four shadow sneak from the blade and he's gonna go for the earthquake and here i decide i'm just gonna go for the secret sword because if i go for shadow sneak and i get fully parried I still have to hit another Shadow Sneak if I get the same roll anyway. So I have two chances to get fully parried. Whereas if I go for this a Secret Sword right away, I take this Swampert out, and if I get fully parried, then on the next turn I have another chance to go for a Shadow Sneak. So I decided it was my best play overall, as we do get off the Secret Sword, luckily, able to knock out this Swampert. Now the uh, Clef Key comes back in, I'm just going to Shadow Sneak here, I'm not going to play games with this thing, going to knock it out, and you guys are going to see right here. Ludicolo comes in on the end of the rain so it doesn't have its swift swim anymore and I get fully parried and his skull is able to take us out so that's the last turn for the blade unfortunately we weren't able to get the full the blade sweep but now I can just simply go into Weasley our Weavile uh, there's nothing he can do he's not faster than us we already know he's not scarf we saw the life orb and uh, we can just I don't know if we saw the life orb actually but it doesn't matter no he's a salt vest but anyway uh, we just go for the knockoff we are able to take out the um the Ludicolo, I calced it before going into Weavile, I was like, there's no way I'm risking the game right here on a miscalc. I could have easily gone into Latias and just gone for either the, uh, well, the Draco Meteor because I'm HP Fire as well for the Clef Key. So, I decided to go into Weavile, it was my best play. Just go for the knockoff, knock that thing out, and that's GG to Tim. He's a great sport. He, uh, he's taken this super well, the fact that he's not doing too well this season. He's a Pokemon breeder. Uh, he likes to play the in-game more than he likes to play League. Uh, he's just getting uh, a little his, his feet wet, basically, uh, in the format. So, great game to Tim. Uh, he's a great guy. I wish he had a channel so I could refer you guys. You can see Mens is in the chat there. Go check out Mens. There we go. And uh, that's going to be it for this week, guys. We are able to pick up a 4-0 win, luckily. And uh, we are now... Uh, what are we now? We're three. What's funny is that we are three and uh, five, and we have a positive differential, I believe. I think we're now plus one, which is really odd when you think about it. That means that my losses are really close and that my wins are very, very big sweeps. So it's it's always it always comes down to the wire. That's been the story of this season. It always comes down to an unfortunate miss on a Stone Edge, uh, crit uh, from a Glalie's Earthquake. Uh, it, it could be anything, and uh, it's, it's been the story all season, but you know what? It's experience, and I'm glad this is happening to me now. Again, I've said this before. I'm really glad this is happening to me early on. It's given me the uh, insight that I should probably post-gom games just to start. 
just just to start playing league format post common games and then i'll hop back into live comms because i personally really enjoy live comms like i will sit through a 30 minute episode of a gba match from a drive or uh miguel mega mogwai or um an, a ucl match from uh, pokemon md or shady penguin when he used to be in both leagues I would sit through those matches and I enjoyed them because I got to see the players thought process I would be super hyped and, and be yelling at the screen when I'd be like no don't make that play make this play and they wouldn't make the play that I was screaming at the screen for them to make and I just I enjoy watching live comms and I'm not a huge fan of post comms I can deal with it uh, the best the best uh, post comer in my opinion is by far uh, John Pokemon uh, and I kind of want to do what he d does uh, where he really really explains where uh, anything can go wrong for him in a match uh, he, he does amazing amazing post comps uh, but my uh, my goal for this channel is always to do things that I enjoy watching and uh, that's that's the case with an LP that's coming up on this channel as you guys will see eventually uh, it's the case with everything that I do I just want to make content that I enjoy watching back that's all so for right now I'm gonna I'm gonna post comm just to gain some experience, and then later on, we're gonna jump back into live comming once we have a good foot holding, uh, foot holding in this format, and we are gonna tear it up with the Montreal Habsaws, man. This team is starting to look, well, this team. Um, I'm, I'm feeling good about how I'm uh, progressing in league format, so I hope you guys are as hyped as I am for the direction that I'm going with the Montreal Habsaws. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my Facebook and my Twitter. Both are in the description as well. Leave a comment for me. Let me know what kind of wacky sets you want to see from the here, to, here to the end of the season. I might try to... If we if we lose the next game, I'm officially just doing anything. Like, I'm, I'm bringing the most unheard of sets ever so you guys can suggest literally everything anything and everything and i will bring it so make sure to leave a comment down below and again guys thank you so much for watching i will catch you guys later ciao